Okay, some quick hints on how you're going to get the force of friction. Uh, be mindful, I did say force of friction between your shoe and the surface. So two things, you're going to basically use the springs with your knowledge of Hooke's Law to get the force that a spring applies. And then if you drag it with a constant velocity, you'll be able to apply dynamic equilibrium to get the frictional force opposing this spring force, as long as it's at a constant velocity. So first thing, uh, you'll see I actually have a ruler, kind of rubber band around the wooden block, nothing fancy. I just did this to get it at the right level so that when you see the spring being dragged, you'll be able to then kind of line it up with the ruler and get a new stretch on it. So when you do this, it's going to be best to have your iPad kind of where my hand is shooting a video. That way, if you then rewatch the video and pause it, you'll be able to see the spring in line with this and approximate the new stretch. Okay. The other thing then is, of course, on your spring, have the paper clip with the bent hook like we've used before. And most shoes will have laces, so if they do, it's real easy. Just loop this under the first loop and then have it as close to the ruler as possible without hitting it because we know what their iPad's depths in this issue. The other thing is when I do drag this, two things, it's gotta be with constant velocity and I've gotta pull perfectly horizontal, no up or down, all right? So if I need to kind of do a start to get it past the jerkiness, that's fine. And then once I get it smooth, I'm pulling perfectly to the right and then I want that constant velocity. So if I record that on my iPad and then rewatch it and pause it right around there, it looked like I was pretty smooth right around there and the new length, I can do my best to line it up here. If I then apply that stretch, uh, the displacement, if I figure it out, with the spring constant we already know from previous labs and Hooke's Law, I can get the force that the spring's applying. And then the big thing is, if it's moving with a constant velocity, the spring's force to the right must be balanced out by the frictional force opposing the motion. So FBD will kind of help us confirm that if we can set up Newton's first law on the X component to get that frictional force, all right? And again, be mindful that's the force of friction, not the coefficient. Uh, what if though you don't have a shoe with laces? Uh, not too bad. If you actually turn most shoes around, you can then just kind of hook it to the back. Sometimes they even have a little loop here to put your finger in to put your shoe on. Uh, but you could drag it the opposite way again, just get as smooth and horizontal as possible. Um, another thing though, big boots. Sometimes their laces are high, and if it gets too wobbly, I would stop. But the other thing with boots is, you'll notice this is going to stretch a lot because I'm trying to move a more massive object and it's got a pretty good grip with my table. This is okay for the spring, but if you start getting to like a foot, that's our uh, past our point of no return, kind of like slinkies. So it might be fine on my table, but if I go to test this against uh, concrete or carpet for the surface and I'm stretching it past a foot, I would just stop there and not do the boot. Okay, because again, if these stretch too far and don't recoil, we're, we're in trouble. We're just kind of done there. All right, should be okay to do a basketball shoe, something similar to this. I think it might be fun if you play a sport like tennis, volleyball, basketball. Might be kind of fun to see what kind of traction you're actually getting with the court that you're playing on. Okay, all right, set that up, guys. That should be pretty straightforward.